iOS. Welcome to the world of iOS, Apple's exclusive operating system for iPhones and iPads. Imagine you're at a luxury hotel where the butler already knows your name, your favorite drink, and even anticipates your every need. That's iOS for you, controlled, polished, and seamless. Why is it like a butler? Because Apple controls every detail, from hardware to software. You can't wiggle out of Apple's rules. No custom themes, limited file sharing, no installing apps outside the App Store. It's like living in a curated resort. Everything works beautifully, but within boundaries. Behind the scenes, it's stable, secure, and gets updates for years, even on iPhones from five or six years ago. That's like your hotel butler still remembering your preferences long after a dozen visits. Apps. You'll find a highly curated app store. Developers often prioritize iOS because the users tend to spend more money. So new, high-quality apps often appear first there. Downsides. You can't customize your home screen like on Android or install random apps. If Apple decides to reuse the same phone design for five years, maybe you'll feel stuck. And yep, no headphone jack. It's sleek, but it's restrictive. Every feature syncs beautifully with other Apple devices. You start typing a note on your iPhone, pick it up on iPad or Mac, like magic. Messages, FaceTime, AirDrop, they all just work. The ecosystem is tight. So in short, iOS is luxury, curated service, and smooth operation. Ideal for people who want everything to just work. Windows. Let's shift to Windows, Microsoft's most widely used system worldwide. It started way back in 1985 as Windows 1.0, a simple graphical shell on top of MS-DOS. Picture a fresh, minimal house, one room, a few buttons, and very basic style. Through the years, we got Windows 95, XP, 7, 10, and now Windows 11. It evolved from that minimal shell to a full house with fancy interiors, lots of windows, literally, and support for games, office apps, programming tools, you name it. What makes Windows special? 1. Versatility. Can run on nearly any PC brand or configuration. Like a key that fits many locks. 2. Compatibility. Nearly every software company builds for Windows. 3. User-friendly interface. Drag and drop. Graphical buttons. Desktop icons. Something most newbies can navigate. But it's not perfect. Some issues. Heavy system requirements. Older or weaker PCs can feel sluggish. Frequent, sometimes intrusive updates. Windows update can feel relentless. You step away, and boom, forced restart. Security. Being the most popular makes it the favorite target for viruses and malware. And yes, the legendary blue screen of death, BSOD, still haunts many users. In everyday analogy, Windows is like a busy city, full of everything, everyone uses it, but traffic jams, noise, and occasional breakdowns are part of the experience. Linux. Linux isn't one single OS. It's a family of distributions, distros. Born in 1991 from Linus Torvalds's desire for a free, open-source alternative. Think of Linux like a Swiss army knife. Many tools, flexible, free, and built by a community. Linux is mighty lightweight and secure. It can run on older PCs or massive server clusters. Popular distros include Ubuntu, Fedora, user-friendly, CentOS, Debian, server-focused. Big tech, Google, Facebook, NASA, run servers on Linux. Those web services are powered by Linux muscle behind the scenes. Advantages. Open source, modifiable. Anyone can tweak or build their own version. Legacy hardware friendly. Runs fast even on old machines. Security and performance. Great for programming, cybersecurity, and servers. Downsides. Not beginner friendly. Many distros only offer command line interface. GUI support can vary. Software compatibility. Most mainstream apps and games target Windows Mac OS. Linux users often need alternatives or use Wine virtual machines. It's like a secret hacker's toolbox, powerful, adaptable, but requires knowledge and effort to master Android. 
Now let's talk Android. Google's open source mobile system used by countless brands like Samsung, Xiaomi, OnePlus, and many more. Android is like a global backpacker, flexible, customizable, and can go anywhere. With Android, you can change themes, install custom launchers, tweak almost every setting. It's your phone's personality, unique per user. It supports Google Play with millions of apps and games. You can find phones at every price point, from basics to flagship. But it has downsides. Update inconsistency. Not all manufacturers provide regular OS updates or security patches. Bloatware. Many phones come pre-installed with apps you can't uninstall. Optimization gaps. Because of diverse hardware, Android sometimes runs slower or less smoothly than iOS. Analogously, Android is like a bustling global city, colorful, diverse, and full of choices, but sometimes noisy, cluttered, and inconsistent. Temple OS Temple OS is one of the most unusual operating systems ever made. Created almost entirely by one man, Terry A. Davis, it feels like a time capsule from the early 1980s. The graphics are locked at 640 by 480 with just 16 colors, and it comes with its own programming language called Holy C. It even includes quirky games and a built-in Oracle program that gives random Bible verses as answers to questions. The system has no networking at all, no internet, no Wi-Fi, no way to connect outside. Terry designed it that way on purpose, making it both extremely secure and completely impractical for modern computing. Still, Temple OS has gained cult status. Some admire its technical brilliance, others its eccentric vision, and many just find it fascinating as a one-of-a-kind personal project. Mac OS Now we travel to Mac OS, Apple's operating system for MacBooks and iMacs. It first emerged in 2001. Unlike Windows, Mac OS runs only on Apple hardware. That's like living in a gated community where all the houses are custom designed by Apple. Because Apple controls both hardware and software, Mac OS is smooth, well-optimized, and stable. Creative professionals, video editors, graphic designers, musicians, love it because built-in apps like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and GarageBand are optimized and powerful. It's like having artist tools pre-installed. If you already use an iPhone or iPad, syncing messages, calls, files, and handoff between devices becomes seamless. Mac OS doesn't interrupt you with constant forced updates and crashes are rare. But drawbacks. Hardware is expensive, and Apple often limits upgrade options. Gaming support is poor. No DirectX, limited GPU power. Many professional software apps exist but with fewer Mac OS versions, or require workarounds like Parallels or Boot Camp. So Mac OS is like a high-end workshop. Clean, efficient, specialized, but pricey, and less flexible. Unix Time travel with me to the late 1960s. Bell Labs, Big Hair, Vintage Mainframes. Unix is like an ancient master computer mage, created back in the day for massive, multitasking, multi-user environments. Today, it's still revered in giant corporations, scientific labs, and weather prediction agencies. Unix is not for everyday tasks like watching YouTube or emailing your grandma. It's more like a backstage control room for huge systems, banks, airlines, research. It handles heavy workloads with multi-user permissions, logs, scripting, and intense stability. Fun fact. Installing Unix can cost nearly $1,447 per user, as in the transcript. That means for 250 users, a full deployment could cost over $350,000, just like an elite magic guild charging per wizard apprentice. Benefits. Rock-solid reliability, high security, multi-user support, proven for decades. Drawbacks. Expensive licensing, no friendly graphical interface, steep learning curve, not for your everyday laptop. Unix is like the energy grid powering a city. You don't see it, but you depend on it every moment. Free DOS. FreeDOS is like dusting off an old record player and finding it still works perfectly.
Created in 1994 by Jim Hall as a free replacement for MSDOS, it lets you run classic DOS software and games like DOOM or Wolfenstein exactly as they were meant to be played. It is still used today in legacy and embedded systems where old software cannot easily be replaced. Things like lab machines, cash registers, or specialized industrial tools. FreeDOS is lightweight, fast, and runs on hardware modern systems would never touch. Enthusiasts also love it as a way to explore the roots of personal computing. So, while FreeDOS will not edit your TikToks or run VR, it quietly keeps history alive, powering old programs that the modern world forgot but still needs. Harmony OS Finally, Harmony OS developed by Huawei as a response to U.S. trade restrictions. Think of Harmony OS as a phoenix rising, China's effort at tech independence. Harmony OS aims to unify devices. Phones, tablets, smart TVs, wearables, IoT gadgets, all running the same OS. That's integration like synchronized dancers across screens. Hardware and software tightly coupled for performance. It's sleek, modern, and lightweight. In regions where Huawei phones are popular, Harmony OS appears more often than Android. It supports app compatibility through Huawei's App Gallery and uses web-based and native apps. Advantages Multi-device integration across smart home and mobile devices. Fast and efficient, thanks to Huawei's optimization. National pride and tech independence. Attractive narrative in China and tech-curious audiences. Downsides. App ecosystem smaller than Google's Play Store. Geographic limitations. Mostly available on Huawei devices and in certain regions. Ecosystem fragmentation. International users might feel disconnected from Western services. Harmony OS is like a self-made orchestra, building its own instruments and performance hall from scratch. Chrome OS Enter Chrome OS, launched in 2011 by Google. It's like having a notebook that's always connected to the cloud, designed for browsing, streaming, and using web or Android apps on Chromebooks. Think of Chrome OS as a lightweight student who carries minimal baggage and uses the internet for everything. Boot up is super fast, automatic updates run quietly in the background, and most tasks are handled on Google's remote servers. That makes the system highly secure, less chance of malware or corruption on device. It also supports Android apps from Google Play, so you can install Instagram, WhatsApp, or TikTok on your Chromebook, adding versatility to what otherwise is just a browser OS. Weaknesses Internet dependent, Offline mode works, but many features rely on active connection. Limited compatibility with desktop applications like full Adobe Photoshop, Premiere, or other pro software. Multitasking limits. Heavy multitasking, e.g. editing video while browsing, can be slow or awkward. Gaming issues. Only basic browser and Android games unless using cloud gaming, like GeForce Now, which also needs fast internet. Chrome OS is like a super streamlined student geared for online life. BSD BSD, Berkeley Software Distribution, is a family of operating systems that originated from Unix, first developed at the University of California, Berkeley in the 1970s. Unlike commercial operating systems, BSD is mostly used by tech experts for servers, networking, and embedded systems rather than everyday consumer computers. Some well-known examples of BSD in action include the PlayStation 4 and 5, Netflix's content delivery network, and firewalls like PFSense and OPNSense. BSD is valued for its efficient resource management, stability, and ability to handle heavy workloads. There are also several versions of BSD, such as FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD, each designed to serve different purposes and use cases. Serenity OS Serenity OS is a love letter to the 1990s, but written in modern code. Started in 2018 by developer Andreas Kling, it looks like Windows 95 at first glance, with its nostalgic icons and simple desktop. But beneath the surface, it is built entirely from scratch. It is not Linux, not BSD, but something new. Serenity OS is a community-driven project a place where developers can experiment and imagine what computing might have been if history had gone differently. It is still a hobby project, so you probably will not replace your daily laptop with it.
but it is fascinating because it shows what passionate people can build when they start over with a clean slate. Using Serenity OS feels like stepping into a retro arcade where all the machines are brand new. It is not practical for most users, but it is inspiring. It proves that operating systems can be fun, experimental, and artistic, not just functional. So, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when a new video drops.